Hi, check out what just turned up in the snail mail. You remember my broken uh, Digitech QC1936 $5 um, scope? Well, I got the replacement screen for it. Um, that was way quicker than I thought. And well, here it is. I don't want to get it mixed up. Um, <laughs> they look absolutely identical. Look at that. Like it's got the thin bezel on this side, the thick over this side. And yeah, these are a very standard thing. Check out the... The ribbon cable looks very similar, not identical, but, oh, jeez, not far off it. If we check out the bottom, there you go, the uh, bottom one there is the newbie. As you can see, the layout of these is uh, darn near identical. They both say 7DD plus 1 uh, FPC, and uh, look, look, you know, the traces are damn near identical. These ones, like, these ones go in on the background diagonally. Here on the other uh, side, they're like a um, closer spacing than these ones here. But um, yeah, it, like, you know, this is like as near an equivalent, I think, as we're going to find. So let's plug it in and see if it works. <laughs> uh, problem number one. Um, I don't know where the driver board is. I thought I kept it all together, but... I didn't, like, I, I even went to the effort to bag up all the stuff and tape it in there, and I, the board, it's got to be here somewhere. Oh, somewhere in the lab. <laughs> Famous last words. <gasps> Relax, I found it. <laughs> there it is. I forgot the metalwork um, as well. So, uh, yeah, so let's mount this in the metalwork. I don't think we'll um, actually need to, like, stick it in there. I don't, uh, you know, uh, people will bitch and moan that I'm not doing it properly. Whatever, get over it. Um, anyway, let's see if it works first before we do that. So does it fit in here? You betcha. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. There we go. Ah. Oh. Fits better than an OJ glove. All right. So that goes on there like that. All right. Let's power it up. See if it works. Ta-da! Oh, yeah, I saw a flicker. I saw a flicker. Ta-da! It's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. But otherwise, <laughs> that is a winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Look at that. That is completely compatible. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to uh, put this back together and uh, peel off the thing. Oh, okay. Look, I'll peel it off now. I'll peel it off now. You ready? Here we go. For you protection aficionados, look at this, look at this, look at this. Or I probably should have left it on for the recipient. No, no, look, I'll tell you, sorry, sorry, recipient, I'll leave it on. I'll leave it on. Oh, yep, <laughs> I'll leave it on for the winner of this scope. We'll be able to get the satisfaction. Oh, that's pretty piss poor, isn't it? Be able to get the satisfaction of peeling this off themselves. I wouldn't want to deprive them. There's a few bubbles in there. But yeah, no worries. Okay, for those of you who are completely and utterly baffled what's going on with this video, well, you're obviously, obviously not subscribed to my EEV Log 2 channel linked in up here and down below if you're not subscribed the video of this five dollar oscilloscope um that where i which i found at the jcar dumpster sale it got over a hundred thousand views on my second channel and then i did a follow-up video actually uh figuring out that this thing did actually work even though the screen was broken um by uh, uh actually talking through the usb and stuff but anyway um yeah this is the third video actually <laughs> repairing this thing i dump a lot of content like this over on my second channel so go and subscribe to it anyway there's a brief little look-see inside for those who haven't seen it this is a hand tech um, scope it's rebranded digitech and uh obviously oh i can't for where is my pointer there the uh, analog to digital converters there little heatsink and then uh, they've just got an fpga under there by the looks of it and then just an applications uh, processor uh, to drive it all couldn't be bothered uh reading that on my uh, camcorder screen here and then when we've got the two input uh, cans there no i'm not going to bother to take them off this is not a uh, complete teardown and uh, some extra stuff around there some power supply stuff some external trigger circuitry and this has got a uh, function gen as well so the function gen will be in there somewhere is that no that's the external uh trig the function gen is actually that one under there so i don't you know there's quite a few things missing there but uh anyway that's a look inside this rebadged hand tech uh, scope 
open frame power supply. Uh, no worries about the, any of that EMI rubbish. So we'll whack this back on here and uh, put the screws back in. And if you remember from the original video, this one actually, uh, uh, this one did actually supposedly come back to JCAR with a fault. So I'm not sure what the, uh, what the deal is because we tested in the previous video and it seemed to work, it seemed to work okay. Let me put a few extra screws in there, screw that back together and well, we'll uh, power it up. Oops. I had a leftover screw. Gonna have to take it back apart again. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of sneaky little self-tappers under the uh, metal can that I forgot to put back. Oops. All right, so let's power it up again. It's all back together. And yeah, um, the winner's gonna have to peel this off, but it could actually be caught behind some of the front bezel there. So I'm gonna have to take, him, take it apart before you turn it on. Um, th there you go. And yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So we had an LCD fire. I don't, yeah, I think I've still got the box. Hang on. So here it is. Uh, Ross bought this by the looks of it. Um, and it was uh, returned uh, 12th month 20. So, you know, not that long ago. Um, it is covered in dust, this box. Anyway, um, yeah, constant slash false readings. I, whatever that means, um, we... Uh, got uh, both waveforms in both channels the other day just fine and the function gym was just fine so I don't know the uh, cracked screen um, actually happened I don't know because obviously um, it wouldn't have it would have been returned for you know like obviously they would have tested it when they returned it and gone oh look the screen's been shattered so you know the customers just whacked it um, so that's not covered under warranty we're, we're not going to replace that but uh, yes yeah, so I must have had some other fault but anyway there you go channel one Channel 2, none of that colour-coded rubbish. <laughs> Couldn't afford colour-coded LEDs. This is a uh, base model hand tech. I can't remember. Um, H4000. Uh, um, but I think they've got, like, various models of the 4000 or something. But it's one of the 4000 uh, series variants. And it's interestingly... I like got this uh, Gen DSO button here and then Gen off and on is fine but then Gen DSO display and your horizontals, this little pissant knob up here, don't like it at all. But uh, anyway, so we can turn our, there, there's our Gen, so we actually get our signal generator display. That's not the oscilloscope display, um, that's the actual what's been, what will be generated. Whoop, whoop, oh, sorry, yep, yeah, yeah, I got that wrong, DC, there you go. So different types of waveforms, there you go. Beauty. So just like the video the other day, channel one's over here. That's a bit confusing. That's uh, sync trig, and this is gen out, and then got external trig over here. So if we go back to our DSO view, we should. Oh no, we haven't actually turned it on. Gen on. There we go. And uh, yeah, go back to the display. And oh, channel one. Yep. So oh look, we'll just auto set the sucker. Okay, show that the auto set functionality works. I'm feeling lazy, Dave. Naughty, naughty. There it is. Um, it works just fine. And we plug it into channel two, and we auto set. It should detect that channel two. It's going to do that, and yeah. No workers. So both channels basically work. So our frequency, I did actually criticize this. I oh, know, yeah, the velocity control, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> what if you want to go to 20 but like it's not this touchscreen rubbish so we enter and then we have to um somebody saying could you plug a mouse into it i doubt it nope absolutely not <laughs> um i'm not surprised at all so i put in 20 megahertz we've obviously got some alice in there but there you go 20 megahertz no worries so and 20 megahertz on channel one as well not bad for a five buck scope, huh? Whoa, look at that. RMS, 900 millivolts. Well, one thing I'm looking for here is to how to set the 50 ohm, whether or not you get a 50 ohm load. It's not there. Um, uh, Beulah, Beulah, Beulah. It's not there. And for those who want to know what, what I'm saying, when I say Beulah, 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 it's Ferris Beulah. Say Ferris. Anyway, so amplitude is only uh, two volts there, so, you know, like, I, I really don't like this <laughs> it's interface at all, it's terrible, Muriel. Anyway, um, there you go, so we're outputting, i got to assume that the amplitude is, like, relative to a 50 ohm load, but anyway, i got a 50 ohm load now, and uh, let's go to uh, channel one, 
shall we? 20 meg limit is off uh, DC times one probe. And if we measure, there it is there, peak to peak, 120 millivolts. Um, well, that's not right. There's 500 millivolts per division showing 120 millivolts peak to peak. We're on one to one, we're on times one probe. That doesn't make sense at all. Oh, doll, I totally missed it. Um, the limit was on. <laughs> I love it how they got like, like a speed limit sign there. I, I got that confusingly wrong. The 20 meg bandwidth limit is on, so you expect it to attenuate. Oh, got out the other scope and everything. Um, there we go. That's better. That's better. There you go. So where's our measure again? There it is there. And uh, 100 millivolts, 120 millivolts peak to peak. What? Oh, I just figured out what's going on here. Um, look, I thought that this was enclosed in a box. Oh my goodness, look at this user interface. I thought this was enclosed in a box, peak to peak. Okay, so I thought it was 120 millivolts there. It's not. Peak to peak is actually below that. 1.92, you're probably already screaming at me, but like that, like that is ridiculous. I, that was totally non-obvious. Please leave it in the comments. Is that just me? I'm um, being dumb, or did you think that was a thing too? Unbelievable. Anyway, let's test channel two. Oh, multi, multi auto set, multi cycle, single cycle, multi cycle. All right, all right. Click in, click in, click in. There we go. Um, okay. Right, it wasn't displaying, it wasn't displaying that menu before. Anyway, we're in, there we go, channel two, and then okay, and we get our 1.94. There you go, and it's changed colors too. So there you have it. Um, yeah, that's, you know, that's good enough for Australia, that's near enough. Uh, so we'll just check, we'll spot check another uh, like lower amplitude uh, one. So we'll, you know, go down here and we'll type in, can we type something in? No, nope, we can't type that one in. So let's go down to say 200 millivolts, right? No wackers, all right? Unsupported operation, please push Gen DSO to quit. Oh God, Lord, that's, ugh. see this stupid display thing and it puts like, I, no, no, I don't know. This is very confusing and it looks like the scope display. So you're just t utterly confused. Um, oh, channel two volts, volts, volts per division. There you go. So we got our, yeah, 196 millivolts, no wackers. So, you know, I'm not going to go through and test every single range. I will leave that up to the uh, intrepid winner of this thing, youngster, who will, uh, I'll send this to for Nick's. Only cost me five bucks and an LCD. <laughs> the LCD cost me, I don't know, 20 bucks including postage or something. I'm telling you, that is the worst display. This is the worst user interface ever, ever. I don't know if you have one. No, I know those little pocket ones there. No, much worse. Anyway, there you go, 192 millivolts. Okay, yeah, so no worries. It's got 20, if it's got 20 meg, 20 meg bandwidth, I'm sure it's got, I think that's the maximum of the uh, function gen, but um, what is it? Yeah, no, 25 megahertz, there you go. 25 meg, 200 meg sample per second, 100 megahertz, one gig sample per second. Anyway, you can do firmware updates, system information for those playing along at home. There you go, it's had 157 boots. So that's actually quite a lot for someone who actually returned it. Um, maybe the, you know, repair department might have, you know, testing, they might have powered it up a few times and stuff. And 157 seems uh, excessive for a return. But anyway, there you have it. So let's have a look at some other stuff. We've got XY mode, <laughs> we can adjust our contrast here. We've got uh, save recall. It's got an SD card on the on the front, which is interesting, micro jobby and uh, single uh, USB port. That's handy. You got your probe compensation as well. Did this come with probes in the box? Yes, it did. So I'll be throwing in a couple of uh, switchable uh, 100 meg uh, probes as well for the lucky winner. And uh, well, yeah, that, that seems to work just fine. Like, you know, I could test the external trigger and stuff like that, but is, is there any point, really? What is F7? I'm gonna press it. Whoa, okay, okay, there you go. Um, F, that is F7. Yeah, that's our um, dual time base, zoom display, right? Yeah, there you go. 
So, yeah, that's our dual time base. And, uh, you know, it's, look, this is not the best scope on the market. I wouldn't recommend you actually buy one of these things. Um, somebody in the comments on the previous video mentioned that, you know, well, it's all right for the money. You know, look, if you can get it for like 200 bucks, it's like, in the, this is the argument, right? Do you, do you just get a bench scope for 200 bucks, you know, or something? Or do you spend like 400 bucks and get a proper four channel, you know, a modern four channel uh, Siglent or a Rigol or something like that? And I would recommend you spend a bit more and get, you know, one of the new uh, variants. But this is all right, you know, if you can pick it up especially for five bucks. So there you have it, like this thing works and will be a perfectly fine scope for a youngster, I think. Does that push to the vert... Hang on. Oh yeah, it does push to the centre. Yep, there we go. Um, and it's got trick. It's got trigger level and everything. <laughs> anyway, this will be a perfectly fine dual channel 100 meg job with a waveform generator for a youngster. So I picked this up for five bucks, um, you know, like broken as is, um, at the J car relocation dumpster sale. And no, they didn't have more of them. This was the absolute last one. Yes, I would have picked up more. I would have picked up an infinite number of these at $5 if I could, but I got literally the last one. Um, somebody was walking away with the second last one, as you saw in my uh, J car uh, video, if you haven't seen that. Um, yeah, the one that I showed, yeah, he was walking away with the second last one. I managed to find one under the dust right at the bottom of the palette um, and I got it and it was five bucks and it just had a broken screen so I don't know where this uh, the fault on the box um, comes from I don't know the user couldn't um, use the thing properly I don't know may you know there could in theory be something intermittent with it but like if I can get waveforms on you know if you want to test a, the scope functionality quickly like this you test that you can get waveforms on both channels that they trigger and that you can, you know, spot check, you know, a high a high volts per division range and a low volts per division range. And if both of those, you know, and if they, then you're 99.9% .9 sure that uh, the scope has full functionality, and especially when the amplitude matches the SIG gen, because it's not likely that the SIG gens, oh, it's failed by 50%, and oh, the gain of this one has failed, is up by 50%, and like, no, right? So it's, yeah. I reckon this is pretty good to go. Right, so I'm going to give this away to a youngster. I will have a link down below on the EV blog forum. You must post on the EV blog forum in this thread that I'm going to link in. And, uh, uh, you know, please convince me that you're a youngster who needs this. Now, sorry, you have to be from Australia only. Okay, I'm not going to ship this thing overseas, but you can be anywhere in Australia and I'll ship this thing to you for free. And um, yeah, and hopefully you can make good use of it. But you have to be a youngster. You know, look, if you're in university, I'd say maybe that's not that youngster-ish. But, you know, if you can give me a convincing case, but I'd rather give this to, like, some young kid who's going to be absolutely blown away by having a uh, scope with a function generator like this. And sorry if you think it's unfair that I won't ship it overseas and I don't include all my audience. Well, sorry, sometimes life ain't fair. Deal with it. And after, I don't know, another week or something, um, I don't know how long, I will uh, just pick a winner. And it won't be a random winner, it'll be Dave's choice. Although, if um, if you're in the EV blog forum thread, if you do actually, uh, th you, you can't thumbs up a post, you have to like, thanks a post. And uh, the post that gets like the most thanks, um, like if you're if you're an EV blog forum user and you think that uh, youngster who posted actually uh, deserves it, then uh, yeah, give the post a thanks and that might help me uh, decide, you know, if like there's a clear winner, you know, everyone thinks that this kid should get it, then uh, yeah, yeah, I might take that into account. Anyway, link down below. And remember, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to EV blog too, because you missed all the content for this um, on the main channel. And there you go. Catch you next time.